person is not able to make it tonight. So, uh, this is what you've got. Okay, uh, we have one other item of housekeeping to do before we get started. Uh, I suspect everyone has an agenda up here, so we, what we would like to do is amend the agenda, agenda uh, such that uh, item three leads up to the number two spot and number two leads down to the number three spot. So that being said, I entertain a motion for that. So we have a mo motion for that, and I'll have to take it by Mr. Ballard. All in favor, please file a raise of our hand. Okay, I believe we have allotted how many minutes we've been in each person? Three. Three minutes. All right. Okay. Application 2109 Z is to approve denial rezoning request from R1 to AR1 for the purposes of developing use as an overflow parking lot part of rural event center. So the first item, uh, first person up to speak is Ed Culpepper. When you come to the podium, please state your name and address for us one more time. Ed Culpepper. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission. I'm Ed Culpepper. I'm a resident of Sun City Peach Street and have been for 12 years. And I've also been an active participant at Cherokee Rose for those 12 years. I'm here to support the zoning request of Cherokee Rose. As my wife and I were considering the move to Sunset Beach Street, we did our usual due diligence by ascertaining what was available in Sunset Beach Street and we looked at hospitals, EMS, fire stations, shopping, hardware stores, uh, the usual know about if you're moving to a community. During this due diligence period, we discovered and visited Cherokee Roads. Cherokee Roads, in fact, was one of the positive factors that resulted in us moving to some city Peach Street. We have not regretted our decision since we have been here. As you are certainly aware by now, the Board of Zoning Appeals last week approved the variance and exemption request of Cherokee Roads by a vote of 3 to 0. The rezoning from R1 to AR1 is a minimalist change. The actual use of the property for parking, use only 5 to the 25 for less than a half a dozen times per year, is absolutely a minimalist use of the property. I recommend you approve the Cherokee Road zoning request before you this evening. Cherokee Rose from uh, around 2000, which is when Casey Atkinson purchased the property, to about 2016, was very active hosting regional and statewide events four to six times per year and somewhat times around 300 participants or more. Due to an unfortunate incident uh, involving the owner in about 2016, uh, Cherokee Rose was into somewhat of a state of malaise as it related to attracting tournaments just because of the absence of the owner. Although they never missed working, it was still uh, available uh, for the continuous time. It's just for that period from 2016 to 2019 when the Dalton Group purchased the property, there were not that many tournaments, or large tournaments, taking place. The Dalton Group has invested heavily in the acquisition of the property, and they have invested a lot in significant improvements uh, to the operation. This venue has improved so much that they are again hosting state and regional tournaments at Cherokee Road. The county should be proud that there is a venue like this here that's attracting regional, statewide tournaments, and even attracting national tournaments. For those who oppose Cherokee Rose, and some even their existence, remember, Cherokee Rose has been in existence since 1981, 
properly approved and permitted by Floating County. Cherokee Road did not come upon Sun City Peach Tree. Sun City Peach Tree came upon Cherokee Road. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, good job. <laughs> <laughs> nice job. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll need a little help. The next person up is, uh, I believe it's Charles Buckley. Buckley, B U C K L E Y. Okay, well, cool. Please adjust the microphone. <clears throat> My name is Charles Buckley. I live at 316 and Ruby Court in Sun City Petri. I'm here representing 500 residents in Sun City Peachtree who are opposed to the expansion of Cherokee Road. Not to the existence of it, but to the expansion of it. Mm -hmm. uh, Cherokee Road has physically existed for 25 years, but most of those years it has been quiet, relatively speaking. How else could Pulte sell 1,500 plus homes, some of those homes, five to 700, very close to Cherokee Road? Soon in March, 2022, coming up four months, Cherokee Rose is gonna host the biggest shotgun shooting event in the United States of America. It's called the Gator Cup. There'll be 600 plus shooters over from 39 states. This is going to have a significant impact on Spalding and Sun City Peachtree. This was a local kind of a gun club operation for a long time. Now it's becoming a national thing. The noise will be nonstop for five days and with practice rounds before that. We're talking tens of thousands of shots per day, 600 cars or RVs or trailers on Baptist Camp Road, two-lane road. It's not 19, Highway 1941 with three lanes in each direction, a traffic signal, and a boulevard entrance into the facility. We're talking two-lane road, gravel off, and gravel on. Okay, uh, in the last five years, well, excuse me, in the last five years, is something you should know. It's really historical. Uh, San Francisco had to clean up a sporting play venue. Cost them $22 million to take out four feet of soil, put back soil. Uh, Cherokee Road says it's gonna be great economic benefits uh, to uh, Spalding County. That's not true. Spalding does not have the class A hotel rooms necessary for uh, a venue like Cherokee Road. Most shooters will be housed in other counties and the sales tax revenues they say are gonna come, they're truly speculative. But let's look at Sun City Peachtree. Sun City Peachtree already pays approximately $10 million in real estate taxes every single year. And the 3,000 plus residents of Sun City Peachtree spend more money in Spalding County than the shooters at Cherokee Rose coming from out of state will spend in an entire year. The taxes, uh, received by Spalding County will fall if this uh, this tremendous noise uh, onslaught uh, goes or comes uh, because residents have now put homes on the market pending this uh, event. They think it's going to be a problem. Ask any realtor or any lawyer. You have to disclose to prospective purchasers the problems that your neighborhood faces. And if you don't, you have potential legal liability. Mr. Blake, go ahead and wrap it up. Okay, sir. Uh, what I have to say here is that everything I've said and what they will say is looking forward to an event which has not happened. So I recommend you do this to the, recommend this to the Board of County Commissioners. Recommend that your decision be deferred until after the Gator Cup is held in four months. Then decide after you've experienced what's happened, the entire process. And uh, we'll all know whether it's a liability for Spalding County or a benefit. Thank you, Mr. Buckley. Thank you. Okay, hold on for Okay, Bay Dalton. Good evening. I'm Dave Dalton, I live at 895 Baptist Camp Road, 
and I'm the managing partner of um, Cherokee Roads. Uh, Gene and I bought Cherokee Roads in August of 2019, and yes, at that time, um, it was almost out of business because of the terrible accident that Casey Axton was involved in. Since that time, um, we brought Cherokee Roads back from um, a blighted spot on Baptist Camp Road that provided no economic benefit to the community. Now, this past year, we hosted 14 National Sporting Clay Association events. Um, we hosted multiple charity events, including the Boy Scouts of America for Flint River. Uh, they had their largest event ever with over 220 shooters. Um, we've hosted um, high school shooting events with close to 200 shooters. And with the parents and the grandparents that show up, um, we have over 500 people um, there parking and nobody complains about a thing. Nobody complains about the shooting. Nobody complains about the traffic. Um, we own three, excuse me. We own three homes on Baptist Camp Road. Um, Jean and I live there. My brother, who's director of um, operations, lives there. And our team member, Brian, quickly lived there. Um, and trust me, the traffic does not come from Cherokee Road. Uh, the traffic comes from Sun City Peachtree, but the roads handle it. That's okay. As they brought up, there's 1,700 homes there. And Pulte is a huge developer. There's a reason they're building 1,700 more homes. It's not because of Cherokee Rose. Um, the Gator Cup came to us, and it is one of the most prestigious shoots in the country. It's not the largest. The largest is the Nationals with 2,000 people. Uh, the U.S. Open has 1,200. There are multiple um, regional events with 900. So we will have 600 shooters from 39 states. They'll spend on average $5,000 a piece. About a thousand of that will come to Cherokee Rose. So there's four thousand dollars, or approximately two million dollars, that's going to come to Griffin and Spalding County in a five-day period. The Holiday Inn is sold out. Um, ask Jay Henry what his business does in the tournament. Ask John um, Pierre and Margos. Ask La Perilla. Ask the gas stations. Um, we're we're good for um for Griffin and Spalding County. We need the overflow parking for one reason. Today, shooters show up with a pickup truck, a trailer, and an ATV or a customized golf cart. It takes up three to four parking spaces. And so that's why we bought 25 acres. Why 25? They wouldn't sell us five. We don't need the other 20. All we want to do is to make a natural parking lot that we can safely park these people. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. <coughs> And next, I have signed up as Ed Dalton. Good evening. I'm Ed Dalton. I'm the director of operations at Cherokee Rose and NSCA Level 1 instructor. Um, like Mr. Culpepper said, Cherokee Rose has hosted uh, regional and state events here before with three or 400 shooters. As Dave said, the industry has changed to where it used to be they come in at golf carts. Now they bring their own buggy. So there's a need for more parking. Uh, since those tournaments were held, over 100 acres at Cherokee's Rose was put into a conservatorship. So I can't create more parking at Cherokee Rose. Therefore, overflow parking, <coughs> excuse me, overflow parking. You know, we need that across the street three or four times a year. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, Jack uh, Tim. Good evening. My name is Jack Tinley. I live at 113 Southside Drive, Griffin, Georgia. I've lived here all my life. Um, I've worked at Cherokee Rose for approximately six years. And I just want to say that this would be a huge, huge benefit for the economy for Spalding County and uh, for us to be able to host large events if uh, you guys approve. Thank you. Gene Bostick. Mm -hmm. 
Good evening. My name is Jean Bostic. I also live on site at Cherokee Rose. Um, as the others have mentioned, we are looking at 895 Baptist Camp Road. Thank you. As others have mentioned, we want this to be a first class facility and a first class event in March, which is why we are requesting additional land to park on. Um, it's not a huge ask, as this is going to be about five days a year. And I just wanted to thank you for your attention and consideration. Thank you. Cody Madison. <clears throat> Good evening. I'm Cody Madison. I live at 4115 Bethany Church Road in Williamson, Georgia. Um, I'd like to address the noise complaints. Uh, I'm a level two instructor with the NSCA. I have over 3,000 hours of range time giving lessons to uh, people of all ages. Uh, in my 15 year career working premier facilities across the country, um, every venue deals with noise complaints, um, mainly from residents that have moved to the area and do not do their homework as to the shooting venue in the area. Coming to the nuisance is a choice. Shooting and hunting is a part of the culture here in the Southeast. Several of our neighbors shoot rifle and pistol almost every evening that is rapid fire shooting, and that does not come from Cherokee Rose. Cherokee Rose only shoots shotguns. Um, we get requests to put in rifle and pistol. We are adamant that we don't want to do that. We want to maintain the shotgun only facility. Um, the NSCA rules state that it's no more than two shells in a gun at any given time. Um, any rapid fire that's heard in the evenings is not us. Our hours are 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. If shots coming from outside of that, that is not coming from us. From 100 yards away, a shotgun blast drops to 60 decibels. A vacuum cleaner on average is 75 decibels. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here to discuss a five-acre gravel parking lot. And gentlemen of the board, we appreciate if you would consider that approval. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm looking at the quiver. Brian. Good evening. My name is Brian Quiddy. I live 895 Baptist Camp Road. Um, I've been in this sport for over 10 years now. I've traveled to many other clubs. What we do at Cherry Rose is a lot. And what land we have is. We do, we're able to hold a lot more compared to other clubs. A lot of clubs, most clubs, they average 500, uh, 500 acres. We only have about uh, 130. And for us to be able to expand, it doesn't happen very often. Land's being bought up everywhere. So we ask that you approve that uh, five acre parking lot for us so we're able to expand and keep on growing. Thank you. Robert McDonald. Good evening. My name is Bob McDonald. I live at 202 Pagoni Court in Sun City. Uh, I'm not going to belabor too many points, but I wanted to uh, 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 read and listen to the arguments our neighbors have uh, against the Cherokee Road. And quite frankly, they just wanted to go away. And uh, that, that's not going to happen. Deborah Bell's letter dated October 28th. Uh, did a very good job of outlining the Spalding County and the state of Georgia uh, codes that protect uh, shoot, sport shooting ranges. Uh, Cherokee Rose is here to stay, but despite what many of us might see. I do want to try and correct a couple of statements that you, if you haven't heard them already, you will hear them some point. Uh, <coughs> property values. At the last meeting, several of our neighbors speculated that the proximity of Cherokee Rose is destroying the property values. And it'll make it impossible for them to sell their homes. Well, I'm here to tell you that resale homes are selling within days or weeks, uh, even those that parallel uh, Jordan Hill Road. Uh, <coughs> Spalding County apparently agrees that our, our property values are deteriorating because our tax bills just came out, and they went up about 5%. Uh, according to uh, uh, real estate sales, actual sales prices, uh, Prices in Sun City have increased between 18 and 28 percent in the in the in the past year. 
my own home, which I purchased in September of 2020, uh, according to Zillow, has gone up $70,000. So uh, I think it's, it's pretty clear that the shooting range is not destroying our property values. Uh, also at the last meeting, uh, one of the gentlemen, in fact, I heard, heard a bit of it here again tonight, saying that we have a, an obligation to disclose the fact that uh, there's a shooting range there. And if we don't do that, we can be held liable. And if we do disclose it, we're going to be unable to sell our houses. <clears throat> we all use the same property disclosure. This is this. There's not a word on here that says we need to disclose. Uh, there's no place on here to even do that. <clears throat> Um, one of the statements somebody made referenced California, and I think, and, and well, according to the brief research that I did in California, you are required to do, so, to do such uh, disclosures, not so in the state of Georgia. <clears throat> right or wrong, that's the law. Uh, so, but anyway, for the record, Georgia law does not require a homeowner to disclose that there's a shooting range there. there. The existence of the range is a matter of public record, which is accessible uh, to any buyer during the due diligence period. So, I respectfully ask to uh, uh, recommend approval of this uh, zoning. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Dale Levine. Two twenty Begonia Court. Oh, thank you. Thank you I'm sorry, I signed on the wrong line. I did not sign to this week. I'm sorry. I did it inadvertently. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay, uh, James Newland. My name is James Miller. I live at 303 West Spring Pines Way. Just so happens that I live in Sun City too, but I don't think that's very important in this matter. I think being a resident of Spalding County is more important. I also shoot at Cherokee Rose. I consider it to be one of the great privileges of living in Spalding County to be able to do so. There's not very many counties where you have access to such a superb, and I don't use that word lightly, superb, environmentally friendly beautiful venue. <coughs> Cherokee Road is one of the jewels of Salt County. We should support them. Okay, we're halfway through the first page. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing great. You're doing I appreciate, great. I appreciate the <coughs> people observing the time and so forth. Okay, we'll move over to column two. Dana Bird. Diana Bird, 423 Tallulah at Sun City. Uh, I am asking you to vote no. Um, yes, I understand from the uh, letter that came out from the community development that Cherokee Rose is here to stay, and there is nothing we can do about it, that there will be noise. However, uh, this zoning request for overflow parking, I feel that it encourages more of these large tournaments. Um, the Gator Cup itself, we talked with uh, the Gator Cup sponsors to just find out exactly what it meant because I've never been to a shooting tournament. Um, in the March 15 through 20, there are about 630 people signed up for that already. And Gator Cup uh, sponsors agreed that there would be over 475,000 shots fired over those days at least. And then with more um, uh, shoot offs, etc., that there could climb even higher. I don't know about everybody else, but I cringe to think of the noise level with that several hours a day for those over the duration of that, that tournament. And that is why I'm opposed to uh, adding the, the uh, overflow parking. I just feel that it encourages more of these large all day tournaments. Thank you. <laughs> Bob Breyer. Thank you. 
Good evening. I'm Bob Byer. I live at uh, 516 Orchid Lights Court in Sun City, and I'm, I'd am like to speak to you tonight in opposition of the rezoning application 21-09Z. I've been a resident of Sun City for seven years, and I live a mile and a quarter away from the Cherokee Road. The gunfire noise in the past in Cherokee Rose, while a distraction, has not been disruptive. However, recently, in the last several months, as my wife and I and our dogs sit in our backyard, we have noticed an increase in activity in the noise level from the gunfire at Cherokee Road. My concern about the proposed rezoning is the substantial increase in the noise level that will result in the many proposed large vents at Cherokee Road. Many residents have been objecting to existing gunfire noise, but our county commissioner has pointed out that Cherokee Rose was there before Sun City and nothing can be done. However, the recent applications from Cherokee Rose do change things considerably. And as shown from the many petitions that were presented, residents of Sun City have great concern. <clears throat> if you look at the staff recommendations under application 21-09Z, under item I, you'll see that it must be in compliance with zoning ordinance development standards AR1 for overall event center. Actually, it's really part 11, and it refers to noise abatement and control. Now, we've been notified by Deborah Bell, Director of Community Development, that uh, state law was adopted recently that protects sports shooting ranges from nuisance actions, such as noise nuisance. But can you imagine somebody down the street from where you live shooting off strings of firecrackers from 9 a.m. to 5 for four or five days in a row, several times a year? This is what we in Sun City <coughs> trade. It wasn't like that when we moved in at all. It was tolerable at a tolerable level. We in Sun City urge you to deny this rezoning request and help us maintain the quality of life where we live. I'm not asking you to stop activities at Cherokee Road just to prohibit this large expansion. Thank you. Okay, I believe it's Erica Swanson. Eric. <laughs> Eric. <laughs> well, they had a K in front of it, so yeah, I was kind of. Good Good evening, my name is Eric Swanson. I live at 444 Golden Rod Court in uh, Sun City. I'm gonna, my, my remarks got short because part of it's already been covered, but the concern that we want to bring to your attention is the, the traffic and congestion possibilities and potential that's there. First of all, we're talking about cars, trucks, or trailers, and there's been a lot of uh, advertisement about RVs as well. And being an RV owner myself, I know how it doesn't fit on the Baptist camper not very well. Even with the resurfacing, it's a substandard road for a heavy amount of traffic. It's narrow, narrow lanes and no shoulders. Part of the permit uh, request or in the commission uh, last week that there would be no parking in the state or in the road right away. Uh, that's difficult to enforce on a good day. Um, <clears throat> Baptist Camp Road is undersized, and when we start putting uh, a heavy amount of traffic on there, first of all, one of the considerations is we don't have the law enforcement capacity to do that kind of crowd control. We're going to have the sheriff's office that's already under staff and have difficulty in you know, hiring. Parking on the proposed site uh, would be limited to about 200 spaces plus or minus if it was just cars. Five acres isn't that big a space, especially with the trees that are uh, proposed to be left in place. The uh, residential regular traffic is pretty pretty significant on any day and that area is growing further uh, on a daily basis. There's a serious impact also when we have that many vehicles in the area being able to move emergency vehicles in and out of the area for Cherokee Rose or for Sun, Sun City, either one. Uh, that congestion is a serious problem. So that's it. The traffic and parking issues are what we're concerned with. Uh, other people will speak to other concerns. Thank you. Uh, Judy Golden. 
and you reopen on your neck, 115 by the healing court in prison. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I can't speak in the I'm sorry, Jai, so forgive me. Okay. So, I'm in total disagreement with the expansion of Cherokee Rose because of the impact it has on Sun City. Um, we have worked all our lives for quiet enjoyment. We have veterans in the community that suffer from PTSD in this community. And every time they hear the guns fire, it has traumatized them. Some of them will not leave their houses now. I am a realtor, and I'm real reading another realtor's letter, who also lives in Sun City on Begonia. Um, and she says, I am a realtor who lives in the community. I am already losing sales because of Cherokee Rose. If you let them expand, Sun City may be history, and there goes the taxes. Ten million dollars, that's a lot. In my professional opinion, Hopi may not be able to finish their homes. Um, it has impacted our community beyond words. It is devaluating our homes, including mine, and that is upsetting for all of us. Please do not destroy what is left of our community just to bring more revenue to the county. I urge you to vote no for this expansion. I also have to add, expanding, I'm concerned with once you do expand um, and do the, the zone changing and make that into commercial zoning rather than residential where it is now, that is going to open it up to more commercial zoning all along Baptist Campus Road. And we're going to see the whole area go down. I please do not let this go through. This is our community. We are senior citizens. We came here to, to enjoy life, not to have to put earmuffs on so that we won't hear the noise that we're going to hear. What's going on now is fine. We could all live with it. We live there now. It's not bothering us. But to listen to 40,000 gunshots in a day, that's outrageous. You've got to vote this down, please. One more, Mr. Chairman. Has she quoted a realtor? Should we know who that realtor is? Oh, so, yes, I'm sorry. Thank Susan you. Susan Bradford. Susan Bradford, thank yes. you. Yes. And I, just another point. The property rezoning is not a commercial rezoning. It's an agricultural rezoning. So what is what what exactly is that agricultural rezoning? What does that do? Explain it to me. The, the current request is for rezoning to AR1, which is an agricultural and single family residential district. Okay. Not a commercial district. And what, what is R? Residential. So what are they rezoning it to? The request is to rezone it to agricultural residential, and then there's a concurrent request for a special exception <laughs> to allow the use. And we'll discuss that in a little more detail. Yeah, because everybody's done. That would be great. Talking. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to take a stand at this. The next person signed up is Gary Casamante. Very good, you did that, right? <laughs> okay. That's not an easy one. Hi, good evening. I'm Joy Pasinante. I live on 519 Inkberry Drive. And I thank you for the privilege of being able to speak to you this evening, as well as everybody else. Actually, I'm not here to make a major statement. I'm really here to ask a question, if that's allowed, okay? Um, 
If there are 25 acres that have been purchased by Cherokee Rose and their zoning ordinance is approved for parking purposes, they have stated previously that they are only going to use five acres of those 25 acres for the parking. What if in the future they decide, because everything is going wonderful for their events, that they are going to use 25 acres that have already been rezoned by the board? Is there anything in writing to prevent them from using 25 acres instead of five acres? That is my question. Actually, Robert, comment. Since I was at the planning, we're not allowed to answer questions at this point. Oh, okay. This this is audience participation for you all to make comments. Okay. And then we will hear we will have the owner, and we will ask him questions, and then we'll ask the staff questions. Okay. The reason we're making notes is I will try and get your question answered. Okay, I appreciate that that's because that's. that's it's kind of a funky system, but that's how it works. Okay, that is fine as long as we get an answer. I'll, I'll start with, and they'll all remember it now. Okay. Be well. <laughs> okay, because that's something that I was at the other meeting, and I nothing know. has ever come up about. I know. That. <laughs> yep. I was at the other meeting too. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, the next person signed up is Mo. That's Mo. Okay. <laughs> she put me down to speak, so I figured I might as well come up here anyway. My name is Mo Passanani. I live at 519 Aintbury Drive in Sun City, and I pose a couple of questions also. Uh, number one, if we're going to take five acres of the 25 acres and develop it for parking, what happens when the last car goes in or the last truck goes in and there's no room? Does that mean that the other 20 acres are leveled land or are they all woods and trees? Or can I just bring my car in and park anywhere beyond the spots that are created? Number one. Number two, RVs. By definition, those RVs are usually equipped with uh, uh, a place to eat, a kitchen, a bedroom, and so on. Maybe some entertainment. Are people going to be allowed to, to park overnight? And if so, if we're talking about four to five days of activity, does that mean that I can bring my RV in and stay there for nothing? for four or five days, where's the garbage going to go? Parking on gravel, I saw it happen in the Poconos with the NASCAR races up there, and they were parking all over the, the, the parking areas because there were no lines on the gravel. You know how, that, how quickly that evaporates on gravel? So it would be hard to maintain lines. And when people park, you know that they don't, unless they're clearly delineated lines, People will park sideways, crossways, and so on. So my questions are basically RVs, overnight, at least four or five nights, a lot of garbage, a lot of noise at night if you're going to party, which people do from the Poconos for the NASCAR races. What's going to happen with the extra 20 acres that are maybe, maybe there's no trees on there, maybe there's loads of trees, I don't know. And who's going to regulate all this stuff? How are you? Are you people going to be out there watching this happen when they over when the overflow occurs, when they don't have enough area for parking or for the people to walk across the street or wherever? However, they're going to get from one end to the other. I am totally opposed to this. Thank you for your time. Next person to have to speak is Myrna Rosado. <laughs> I just had one thing to say. I'm going to say it right here, just to simply put this. I invite every one of you to my house 
to my patio, to my screen board, and see if you experience a calm, relaxing, pleasant afternoon. And see if you will want to come back and experience that once this gets passed. Myra, if you want to say something, come up here and get your name and Okay. That's right. Okay, I can't make out this next name, but they will on Anna Ruby Cord. Next two names are myself, Rick, and uh, Paul and Brigden. We really did not intend to comment. That was just a attendance. Okay. Okay, the next person signed up is Corey Plinker. Hello, I am Corey Plinker. I live at 521 Ink Ferry in Sun City. My husband is a Vietnam vet. He was in combat. He listened to gunfire day and night. And I'm speaking for him because he does not like to talk about this. He has mild PTSD, and when he hears those gunshots, he tenses up, and you can almost see him trying to say, stop shooting. And he reaches for his noise-canceling headphones, and that's really not a great way for someone to sit in their own house so they can tolerate the noise. We cannot, and I cannot imagine what it's like for veterans who have severe PTSD, which my husband doesn't have. His is just mild. We can't use our lanai. It's too long. Can't use the front porch. Can't even go for a walk. You can hear it everywhere in Sun City. We can hear it inside the house with the door and the windows closed and the TV on. I even wear earplugs during the day. And you may ask, why do we move here if we don't like gun noise? No one told us. No one. And when we came down here twice to pick out our property, there was no gun noise. We had no idea. The noise started after we moved in, and it has been getting steadily worse. It wasn't bad at the beginning, but it's getting worse. It's getting so you just can't do anything. Georgia is a beautiful state, and we think the Georgia people are lovely, friendly people. And we love our community of Sun City. We wanted a peaceful retirement. We love our home, and we love all our new neighbors and friends, but our house is now up for sale because we cannot tolerate this noise. And the fact that you're going to approve it so the noise is going to get worse is just inconceivable for me. It's just awful. And even though we're moving, I'm speaking because I care about the Sun City residents and the veterans that live there. Thank you. Okay, the next name is Bob. I can't make out the last name. One name. Yeah, the boy, I'll pass. You're passing. Mm -hmm. All right, that's page one. <laughs> okay. I have a Buffington signed up at Mother Free Garden Circle. Okay, we'll save you for last. Okay. All right. Are the Arthur and Jamie Ross? Hi, good evening, everybody. I wasn't actually 
signed up to speak, but uh, I, never, I thought that was an attendance log as well. <laughs> but since I'm here, I'll, I'll say just a couple of points and, and that'll be it. Um, my name is uh, Arthur Ross. I live at 443 Bowen Road Court uh, in South City. I mean, most of the points, pretty much all of the points have been and, uh, and have been covered. Um, you know, I, what can I say? <clears throat> you know, a few weeks ago, might have been in around the, the time change, but I, I've noticed that a few times. Um, shooting seems to start even earlier than nine o'clock. This particular day was about eight o'clock and it was nonstop. I too moved to Sun City for peace and tranquility. And uh, boy, that, that's been a mistake, uh, you know, based on what we have. It sounds like a war zone out there in every day. Um, the expanded parking, again, come on guys, we're not stupid. We know what that's going to do. I mean, let's 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 be frank here. I mean, you're going to use five out of 25 acres. We know that's plan for expansion, just like everything else. So we can we can you know dance around that all we want, but we know that's what it's going to be. Uh, you talk about four or five events per year. Again, increased parking, more events, more shooting. Um, my heart goes out. To the veterans and what they've sacrificed and what they go through as a result of this. That's it should never happen. Uh, the increased traffic on Baptist Camp Road. I mean, it, it's on and on. Um, but I think my, I, bet, I think one of the the most incredible statements I heard tonight was a gentleman over here. That talked about vacuum cleaners and gunshots and what was worse. I can tell you right now, my vacuum cleaner doesn't sound like a, a double barrel shotgun. I tell you right now, I don't know what kind of vacuum you got in your house, but uh, I'm sure I'm sure that would want that one. But come on, guys, let's be sensible about this. What what, what is this really going to mean long term? Sure, the values are going to go. People are going to be getting out of some city. Uh, quality of life is going to be tough. I can't go on my, you know, backyard and and, and and be, you know, and have a peaceful stay out there. Yeah, I'd like to invite each and one of you to come and have a barbecue on my, on, on my uh, patio on a Sunday and listen to what goes on out there. This is going to be devastating if you pass this. So, yeah, I'm one of those 500. Okay, and that was only <clears throat> just because that 500 would have turned in probably to 1200 if we had enough time. Yeah, so that's it. That's all I got to say, folks. I vote no. I hope you do as well. Thank you. Uh, Jerry and Melina. My question was going to ask, and I, I thought I was signing up. <laughs> Robert Sims. Excuse the voice, it's a little rough tonight. My name is Robert Sims. We live at 303 Burberry Court, Sun City Peach Street, Richard Boyce. <clears throat> Many of us at Sun City are strongly opposed to CRs. I'm going to use CR for Chucky Rose. We're strongly opposed to CR's request for an event center and additional parking on Madness Camp Road. There are several valid reasons for our opposition, including quality of life, additional traffic, current and future area development, and loss of value in our homes. Any one of these should be more than sufficient reason for denying. As a group of concerned citizens who are negatively affected by one or more items, we are desperately seeking your attention. Thus far, our pleas have fallen on deaf ears. We have legitimate and quantifiable concerns. We are willing to do anything that we can that is legal and moral to stop any further expansion of CR, including retaining legal counsel. <clears throat> At this time, our priority is table, to table all Cherokee Rose's very Cherokee Rose <laughs> variance requests. There are signs that CR's requests have already been approved and that local government is not functioning as it should. We have the distinct impression 
that we are just being allowed to go through the motions and that everything has already been approved. Our relevant and rational points are being totally ignored. It almost smells of pollution. We are concerned that the conservation easement is not being identified in the documents associated with zoning requests. We are not sure if CR is functioning within the correct boundaries after years of development and change. There are tons of lead and gunpowder being dumped into the earth. This can't be good for the environment. Surveys should be ordered to determine any violations of compliance and combat compatibility with all environmental restrictions and the planned rural residential development zoning. The Unified Development Ordinance 413.G.1 states that approval must not be detrimental to the use or development of the general neighborhood. We have particular needs of land use plan, a land use plan that includes a drugstore, senior health care offices, a grocery store, and other facilities that support senior citizens. We don't need CR to define future development in our community that consists of large gas stations that have fast food items and RV related merchandise. Let us be clear, CR does not have to be a demon in a negative focal point. CR is simply not a good fit for this community, period. And any expansion allowed, parking or otherwise, will cause further and irreversible harm. Cherokee Rose could be a positive for everyone in the right location. If they must stay here, we will do whatever is necessary to stop any growth. Perfect. Thank you, John. Susan Sims. I pass. Joy Kevin. Personal lumber at the gentleman's suggestion. This is sort of a done deal. I think everybody on this board should feel that same way. We are a volunteer group, and to suggest that you come in here and everything's already taken care of, and this is just a sham. Frank, I really appreciate your your um, defense of the process. And I agree with you overall. However, I will I will be asking some questions later that have to do with some correspondence that might lead these people to reasonably reasonably believe that at least one county commissioner has made up his mind already. So I don't think it's entirely out of line, given the communications they received from a county commissioner, for them to raise that point. And I, I, would, I, I would want to explain. Oh, thank you. Let's get through this, guys. Okay, good. Okay, thank you so much. Um, my name is Joy Cavan. My address is 131 Marigold Court in Griffin in Sun City Peach Street. I would respectfully request that the variance request put forward by Cherokee Rose be postponed until further discussion for the use of the properties. The new owners of Cherokee Rose failed to grasp the significance of what was in their backyard, so to speak, before they made the purchase. A top-notch Delaware community of 55 and older residents that have moved here from across the United States. And for many, a tranquil environment inside and outside the home is at the center of their heart and soul, of which defines the quality of life for seniors in Sun City Peach Street. And as of late, several sales in the newer section of Sun City Peach Street has topped a half a million dollars. And to date, there are about 1,550 homes, and upon completion, about 3,300 homes, which will equal to a small town. And yes, I live near Jordan Hill Road, and believe, believe you me, the noise is horrendous. It appears, I don't want to be offensive here, but it appears someone in the Spalding County government appears. Assured Cherokee Rose in the early summer that the various requests will pass without issue. The rub, the green light was given before the official vote was taken. 
I say this because CR has already booked three events for 2022 with the Gator Cup being advertised months ago in a sporting magazine. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Okay, next up is Ed Harlan Hamlin. Okay. My name is Ed Penland. I live at 100 Cambridge Drive South. And uh, first off, I want to thank you gentlemen for being here. I know it's a volunteer and you're sitting up there, you know, at the end of the day, half people going to hate you, half going to love you. So thank y'all for being here. I'll make this brief. Uh, the last time I saw this many people show up at, opposed to something was whenever they were planning Sun City and they were trying to get the zoning request for Sun City. So just as many people showed up, every, all the complaints, most of the complaint, complaints I'm hearing here tonight about traffic, about law enforcement. You guys, if you were here then, you heard it before. It's the same thing going on. Uh, Cherokee Rose has been there since 81. These guys are from out of town. I'm, I'm not affiliated with them. These guys are from out of town. They don't have any old, good old I'd set something up to fix something. They went ahead and planned the events because they're going to have them. Now, you're going to make it easy and fun for everybody that comes and approve it. Uh, then it's going to be that way. But the event's going to happen. One way or another, they plan them, it's going to happen. But uh, I look back and I see what happened with pickleball. Now, when Spalding County wanted to get pickleball in here, they talked about a world-class event to bring money into Spalding County and give recreation to the residents. Well, Cherokee Road didn't ask him for any money. Y'all have to pay a lot of money for pickleball. They're not asking for money. All they're asking for is that you rezone 25 acres, give them a variance for five acres, which means they can't use the five acres of it for the parking. And they're going to use it, I don't know if they didn't use it five times a year, but it's going to be less than five times a year. So uh, I'm, I'm just a good old simple country boy, but I have done pretty good in business. When you're talking about bringing one event, bringing $4 million into the economy, uh, I know that that's going to be good for everybody in Spalding County. I do feel bad for the people who bought houses and been fine with it all these years, but all of a sudden now the shoot is too loud. I do, I do feel bad for them. The Cherokee Road was there in 81. They came down here. So uh, I know you guys got your work cut out for you. I appreciate y'all taking time to look at it, but I'm in favor of voting for it. Thank you. All right, next up is Roy McLean. <clears throat> My name is Roy McLean. I live on Manly Road, about the same distance from the center of uh, the uh, Sunset Peachtree property. So I, you know, I would be exposed to essentially what all these people are talking about as well. I'll tell you the train's much louder than anything else that you deal with. Traffic is uh, probably second. Um, I'm probably in a unique position because I actually am a, and I'm not here representing the NRA, but I am an NRA certified range technical training team advisor. Um, I've been doing that since oh, the late 80s, uh, building ranges, looking at uh, noise complaints and issues. And I have to tell you that most of what you heard here tonight or hearing here tonight is people's emotions. Very few facts. Um, about 18% of the people signed a, a piece of paper that they may not have even understood what they were signing. Um, so there is no noise issue in Georgia, so we can take that off the table to start with. Um, a lot of people are complaining about the, the narrow roads. It might be that Sun City would like to start uh, lobbying for widening uh, Baptist Camp Road. That might be a good thing for the future for the county to look at not only for Sun City Peachtree, but also for other things that happen to be along there, such as the school. Um, I will tell you that the wildlife at times is as loud as anything else, and so if you're in your backyard and, and birds are singing, that may be offensive to you. I don't know. 
But I will tell you, I will tell you that different people have different views and opinions. It might be cultural. A lot of people move here from places that maybe they don't have the culture or the experiences that shooting ranges and that sort of thing in the South is important to. You came here expecting that there were going to be no guns. I'm sorry, I'm here to tell you that there are. Um, if you did a noise study, you'd find that everything out there is louder than Sh Sun City Peachtree. And that's something that you could document. That noise study is going to tell you that the traffic and the train is significantly louder than Peachtree does. I've done these before. I can tell you that's. Um, it is legal to shoot in your backyard, and many of the shots that I've heard described today are probably from people that are not affiliated with, with Cherokee Rose. I, I personally have been out there and heard people shooting very quickly, rifles, lots of pistols that are definitely not shotguns in that general area. I don't think from Sun City Peachtree you're going to be able to tell if it was a shotgun fired on one station or a rifle fired a half a mile away. And so if you're going to lump everybody in the same boat, you need to have your facts straight. Um, a lot of opinions, accusations, any window have come across tonight. Deal with facts. And the facts are that my time is up. Thank you. <laughs> we know what we hear. <laughs> Save the best for last. Karen, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Karen Mayfield, 127 Dunwoody Circle. Um, Roy, I'm glad that you said that because I was trying to figure out how far I am from, from well, Chairman. I'm closer than you are, and that train is way louder than anything. But what I really want to bring up tonight, gentlemen, is I was here back when Del Webb was in inception and thinking about what Del Webb was going to look like. And the room was packed of people that didn't want Del Webb. Do you remember that, gentlemen? No. <laughs> I remember it well, because we got phone calls. We got, I mean, we went through the ringer, didn't we? Um, I remember going to Cherokee Rose when Casey invited us out there. And frankly, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't know where I was going. I had sandals on my feet. And Casey looked at me and said, Karen, do you know where you're you know where you're at? And I said, Well, yeah, I realized that I'm in the woods. But here's the thing. We're talking about a sporting event that is that is classic. Classic. And yes, we do live in rural Georgia. Like it or not, we're still in rural Georgia. Part of my representation is Hampton, Georgia, and I've got people that live along 20 that are having the same problem with the noise of the Jake brakes of the trucks. Had the DOT in into Hampton. We looked at 20. We have a debacle. We don't know what to do. One of my closest friends, at his backyard backed up to 20. I went over and sat in his driveway in the middle of the day and yeah, it was loud. So he ended up selling his house at $20,000 more than he expected. So I have a hard time with the with the um, the property values going down. The time element, I know that I've been at Cherokee Rose and it is nine to six. Uh -huh. So I think that's a little disingenuous for people to say that. <laughs> Um, the emergency vehicles, and apparently, Mr. Cox, you brought this up, that there will be some um, discussion as to what, um, I remember when I was on zoning, we had specific pieces from the fire department and emergency vehicles that, law enforcement, that would be up and down the um, Baptist campground. So you guys are very aware of what that will cause as far as traffic patterns and times. I think that um, some of the, those questions will be answered during that period, correct? Right? No. Um, as far, huh. sorry. You don't mind any Thank you. answers. Mr. Buffington, did you have anything you wanted to add? 
just want to speak on the application for the gravel parking lot and what how we're planning on addressing that. Yeah, hold uh, on just a second. Do we want to go ahead and go into this now or would you like an, an overview now of the request and then yeah, we can add some details? Just hold on a minute. Let's go ahead and do the overview and then we'll have an overview and then we can question the applicant and then we can question the staff. Yes. Okay. So, okay. so this is a request to rezone the 25 acres. Um, the original request from the applicant was to rezone to from R1 to AR1 to allow and then to submit a concurrent request for a special exception request for development as an event center of Earl. I had a long conversation with our zoning attorney in Galloway this afternoon. You couldn't be here tonight, but we discussed this. He recommended that a cleaner way to deal with this from a zoning perspective would be to rezone it to the same zoning district as the balance of the Cherokee Rose property. PRRRD, but and then condition it specifically to the five acre use and to sorry. Yeah, to, to limit the use for the overflow parking use and to limit the number of times per year. And those things are already covered in the conditions of zoning. Um, so let me, I'm going to scroll down and I can address a little bit of the concern about what happens with the balance of the property and what, what the requirements are in the staff recommendations for condition is that the request is simply to develop this portion of the property on the left side of the page, upper corner. That's about five acres that would be partly graded and graveled, and they would also address stormwater and stormwater detention. This will require a land disturbance permit. They cannot continue beyond the boundaries of what is approved in a land disturbance permit. They cannot just go in and randomly clear without permits the rest of the property or do additional grading and then to go back to the this the conditions that would have with the conditions that are recommended to apply would be a 50 foot unstirred buffer on east and west property lines a 50 foot unstirred buffer from any delineated wetlands or flood zones and it shall be the owner's responsibility to provide traffic control signage and paid off-duty deputies for events for days preceding and following the event. And that the development will be consistent with other items in the county's code with respect to the concurrent variance. And that in this condition, if it's PRRD, the special exception request would be withdrawn and that the owner would obtain a land disturbance permit in accordance with the Spalding County requirements. Question? I don't know if I'm allowed to ask. Am I allowed to talk? Sure. Um, so, so are we, are we, so we're, we're now considering something different than what's on paper. We're now considering Changing the zoning from R1 to A R R R P P R R R D. Yes. So that is the, that's the question before us. Yes, that that was that's based and that on. That doesn't require reapplication. We're just going to do that on the fly. No, it doesn't. We yeah, that okay. can be done. Uh, if you'll recall, we did something similar a couple months back. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. On a I'm not rejecting. I just but, I Yeah. Okay. That takes care of a lot of my questions. <laughs> I noticed in the conditions there that it specified that uh, all community deputies will be provided, I guess, before Excuse me, we can't hear you. Could you speak up? Okay, if you notice on the conditions there, can you hear me now? Yes. The uh, deputies are required to be provided before, after, uh, during, and after the event. 
because of people arriving early or leaving late. Yes, and also to provide traffic control for people that are crossing the road. And we we specified some conditions in the in the variance request, and we can add those conditions to this request to adjust it for the change in the zoning and the removal of the special exception. And we can add conditions that would uh, require that they give preference to traffic on Baptist Camp Road when they're allowing people to cross. But crossing, people crossing back and forth across Baptist Camp would be controlled by having off-duty law enforcement there at all times during the course of the event. And also that we would add a condition here that no overnight camping be allowed. This is strictly for overflow parking. There, there have been ex concerns expressed, and that was a condition incorporated in the prior staff report as well, with special exception. Let me open. Let me open the condition from the board of appeals meeting and open. <coughs> Those conditions. <laughs> so here are the conditions that were applied, recommended for the special exception. That the, the, the that would be applicable to the rezoning case itself. The venue is limited to six events during the year with no event to exceed seven days in duration. The owner shall be responsible for additional traffic control during events. Traffic control shall give preference to normal vehicular traffic on Baptist Camp and work to minimize disruptions to normal vehicle traffic. Emergency vehicle access routes shall be maintained at all times. Those are the travel lanes within the parking area as shown in the plan. Camping is not allowed. If temporary lighting is provided for events, it should be cut off or full cutoff type lighting, allowing no more than 10% of the light produced to be reflected above the horizontal plane of the fixture. No parking allowed along the right of way at Baptist Camp Road. The driveway shall remain securely gated except during scheduled events. No event shall violate the litter ordinance, and any future development should be brought before the Board of Appeals and the Board of Commissioners and the modification of the request. In this case, um, any future use or any change in use request would come before the Planning Commission and before the Board of Commissioners as an amendment to their rezoning request because it would be the rezoning request would be limiting this strictly to the overflow parking use as shown in the plan. So I think that addresses some of the questions that people have had tonight. So these conditions could be rolled into the other zoning. Yes, okay. and then we then we can present that comprehensive set of conditions to the board of commissioners. Well, yeah, but I mean, is it? Time for the applicant to. Well, I didn't know if you had any. Heavy oh no, no, no! I'm sorry. Okay. Well, I do. I did. Do I need to ask him now, or can I ask him after? I well, let's bring the applicant up. And let him explain what he's doing, and then we'll start off. My name is Jeremy Buffington, and I live at one of three Garden Circle. Now, uh, I have a. I actually, just have a quick question to clarify something before I start rambling on about something that may not apply. We removed the, set, uh, the, the uh, special exception because the gravel parking is allowed in PRRB. It, it would be a, it would be allowed as an ex, as a the, as a use. as an adjunct activity to. I don't really have anything rows. else to present. Uh, I mean, that's exactly what we're looking for, and 
Uh, my applicant, I mean, my owner doesn't have any issues with the conditions for both. But if you have questions for me, I'll be glad to try to answer them. Okay, Frank, you got any questions for me? Yeah, I, and, and let me just say, I've got a lot, and I'm sorry. I was at the planning commission, at the zoning commission last week, and I actually came out there with more questions than I came in with. Okay, I understand. I've been, I've been mulling this over now. I've spent more time on this than I have on any other case in the last year. So, and I may have gotten into the weeds, but follow me into the weeds, and we'll see where we end up if you don't mind. Yes, no problem. Um, the one of the things that I'm interested in is the scope of the current operations in two respects. One is, and Debbie, you might put uh, one of the, the outline map up there with the parcels. Uh, Cherokee Road, yeah, that's a good one. Is as you said, it's 130 acres, and so how much of that 130 acres is, are you presently in use? Uh, the light green area just north of the long slender parcel that's in Cyan uh, yeah. is it, the boundary of the property. Yeah, that, yeah that's the Cherokee Road. So how much of that? All of it's currently in use. It's 114 acres that are used in sporting play and it's in conservation easement. Okay. And there's a seven acre parcel and a five acre parcel that we okay. park on. Well, that was my next question. I don't fully understand the conservation easement because they, it was put into place before we purchased it in 2014 and it's a federal conservation easement and it meets all the federal guidelines and we have in the federal conservation bank that's in, we have a Dr. Keller or one of his staff that come inspect every single year what's going on there and our, our most recent inspection they said that the property looks better than it ever had since it was put in conservation. They were delighted with what we were doing. We're respecting everything they're doing. We're being very good stewards of the land. That's great. I'm glad to hear that. Um, and, and as I understand, we're, we're, I'm concerned about this is because of the conservation easement, you cannot provide additional parking. You're saying you can't provide additional parking no, on your current property. That's correct. Which wasn't at all clear when this came. You know, and that's an important point. I apologize. It's not. No, I'm it's not. It's not your fault. It's the way the the way the system works. So, but I didn't clarify that. And I did. Um, I did do a site visit, and I got the little did your little map. Okay. And I do understand that. I'm presuming the conservation is up at the top of the parcel. Yeah, when you come out off back to Camp Road, yeah. that's not in conservation. Right. It all starts right. back in the back. Okay. Right. But, but you got you got two. Uh, I guess you call them courses. Already in place. We have two sporting play courses in place, right. 13 stations each. Um, we have four parkours for a game called PCAS. Okay. And then we have a sub gauge course. Okay. That were all there prior to us purchasing it, but they um they they were not maintained from okay. 2016 on, so all we're doing is bringing it all back up. Okay, I did understand one of the reasons I got confused is when you look at aerials and satellites, you don't see anything up there. Right. So I'm going, how can they need more land for parking when they've got all this? I'm just, okay. I wish we could. I, I, okay, that's great. That's what, that's what I need to know. I, I did understand from the site visit that the car crew is fully developed, that it's not finished, it's kind of in development. The parkours? Yeah. Yeah, they were actually, um, they were just completed um, uh, in November 3rd. Okay, great to know. Thank you very much. A few more questions? <laughs> Um, let me try and follow my friend on here. Uh, when you, when you, bought, you bought this property, and I know you're a smart and successful businessman, did you have any legal advice on, on the current zoning or expansion or anything like that? No, sir. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm, a, risk, I'm a risk taker. That's fine. Um, I, it, this may help one day that um, when the Gator Cup was. Um, when I was called and asked if I um, would host it, yeah. um, I asked two questions. How many events do we have to host and how many cars do we have to park? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, the events was not an issue. Um, when we talked about it the prior, the owner of the Gator Cup who's hosted it for 16 years in Florida, he said, we'll be very, very successful if we have 300 people at the event. 
He just said, it's moving to the state of Georgia. It's always been in Florida. It's called the Florida Swing before big tournaments. Um, he says, we'll, we'll probably cap out at 400, but if we have 250 to free the first year, we will be doing great. I said, no problem, let's do it. We put it live on Store Chaser. We had 248 entrants in the first 48 hours. And that's when I started looking for a place to park because the trucks and trailers, I knew we had a problem. I'd already committed to it. I'm going to honor my commitment. Yeah. And that's when we, we bought that piece of property. Uh, that's great. To, that's great to know. And I, and I thank you. Uh, and I have to say, you may have told this story to other people before, but I don't know this information. And these are things I need to I'm glad to ask. Okay. Um, Debbie Ferreira of uh, a little three page sheet on legal issues that was passed out the last meeting, and it's referred to it a couple of times. I presume you've seen that. I've read it. Yeah. In there, it says that as a requirement of this zoning, PRRRB, the, the, the rezoning is conditioned on site plan of, for the development. If a major change to the site plan is proposed, it must go back to the zoning approval processes. Now, I wonder, I'm not entirely sure what that means, and I'm going to ask the staff too, but a major change in the site plan, originally this was to be a restaurant, business center, hotel. This was 25 acres. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm still. I'm still across the street to Cherokee Rose. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was in the original. Okay. Yes. Uh, and that would be the original site plan, but that's gone by the wayside. You don't plan to put a hotel or a restaurant there. I do not. Plan, I do not plan to put a okay. hotel there. No. But but there was there was a major change. It wasn't even proposed, and it didn't go back to the zoning approval process. What's the major change? You eliminated a restaurant, a hotel, a business center. No, I didn't. Yeah, it's all it's there. It's all, it's all it's there. there. On the property that was already I didn't build out. The original build out on the property mm -hmm. is the same as it was mm -hmm. what, when it was built. Correct. Yeah. But when it was proposed, my understanding is when the Cherokee Rose was proposed, it was to be a sporting play resort. Correct. And it may have been approved on that basis. And then it became a sporting play club, which is a. I, I said, you probably think I'm splitting hairs and being crazy, but it seems to me there's a difference there. Yes. Uh, no, I, well, I don't know if I can. Can I? I'm sorry. Okay, okay. So, so anyway, there may be an issue there that needs to be addressed. And I didn't know if you were aware of it. Um, concerning your current zoning, um, which might affect the rezoning, um, mm -hmm. the uh, so, you, so it's very clear you purchased the back road across the street just for overflow parking. That's understand that. Um, I got to look back at this public statements. Um, when, and you were the Gator Cup came to you. You didn't. You didn't go to them. They called me. Yeah. Okay. So they solicited you, and you knew at that time you said you need you you more parking, and um, so you purchased that additional parking for this purpose. Um, you may have one thing that may help, sir. Yeah, please. <laughs> okay. So the National Sporting Play Association regulates the calendar along yeah. the, along the Georgia State Sporting Play. Play Association. Um, and you cannot host another tournament at the same time of another NSCA event. Well, we're in a unique position in that we have four clubs within the 100 mile radius. We have Old Hudson to the east of us, we have Meadows Gun Club um, in Forsyth, Georgia, and we have Big Red Oak Plantation in Gay Georgia. Okay. And they all have um, NSCA events. So when we were asked if we would host the, um, the Gator Cup, the, the dates that they wanted to have it were already taken. And those people won't give those dates up. So there was one date available, which is the March 15th to the 20th. And we actually had to trade a date with Big Red Oak Plantation. So the um, possibility of, of us having future large events like this, unfortunately for us, are slim and not. Um, but it's just because we can't get the dates. The other thing is there's only 13 of these mega blacks in the country, 
and um, they just um, they don't just they just don't pop up everywhere. Well, that's that's one of my questions down the line is, is I think you apply for two times a year, and then I heard four times a year in in comments, and then your staff is recommending six times a year. Yeah. Well. So I, 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 don't, I, don't, I, don't, okay, I did take a risk, sir, and buy a piece of property. Yeah. But to have my hands tied where I can't use the piece off completely. I mean, this is still America. I just don't think that. I don't think that's going to happen. But, um, but I, I do need to ask you, as a smart businessman, do you have a backup plan if it wasn't approved? <laughs> no, I made that decision. Okay, you rolled the dice. And yes, sir. And you accept the consequences. Okay. Um, on to the application process. Um, you, you talked to the Debbie and the CD staff, uh, and apparently you, you work with Paragon Engineering, and you also yeah. may have talked to Commissioner Davis because he's provided us with a lot of information about this. I've never spoken. Okay, okay. okay. is anyone on your staff? Pardon? How would Commissioner Davis know a lot about this? You have to ask him. <laughs> he's not here, so I'm asking. Okay. I don't know. Well, you don't, 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 don't know. Okay. Um, but, okay. Did you spot? Did, did you ever think? Of, did you speak to the Spalding County Tourist Bureau? Um, I've been to the, I've been to the um, Chamber of Commerce. Um, we put in a um, application for a grant with yes. uh, what's it? Okay. What's there? It's Spalding Spalding Okay. Well, okay. So, yes, yeah. so, yeah, since you are working with them, because they, they might be able to do some good stuff. Yeah. So yeah, that yeah. is called in asking you to help us do that. Okay. I didn't I didn't know that either. Sorry. Um. Okay. Um. So you never received any feedback from anyone that this that this was uh that this was on on the uh, prospect of how this would be decided. Absolutely not. Okay. Um, I understand that your primary two rationales for this is that it will um, improve the image of Spalding County and will generate tax money, tax revenues to the county. I'd like to drill a little bit deeper on the tax revenues. First of all, one of the people in the public hearing said $4 million. Do you have any basis for that? No, it's, it's actually, I, we estimated about $2.4 million. Okay, okay. Um, one of the things that I wondered about, because I live in that area, I am I am the representative for that district. Uh, a lot of people live in Sun City, spend as much money in Henry County as they do in Spalding County. Uh-huh. Right or wrong, that's that's how it works. Okay. Uh, and I was wondering that if people attend the program, is and necessarily going to spend the money in Spalding County area, we, we perhaps it's one of the, the Public members suggested it might be spread over to Henry County as well. Well, you know what? I can't control it. I, I, I'm not. I'm just I saying. Say, I know this. The Hall of Ann sold out. Um, I know when we have an event, um, call Danny and Jay Henry, and he sure is happy that his restaurant's full. Call Pierre, who never sells out on Wednesday or Thursday, and Margo, his restaurant's full. The gas stations are full. So, I mean, Britain is getting a, a good piece of it. I don't know if they're getting all of it. But well, that, that's fine. You know, yeah, that's, that's what I need to know. Um, do you think that, um, excuse me, okay, we talked about tourism, that's great, we're getting there, we're getting there. Uh, well, that's, that's a stupid question, I'm not going to answer that one. Uh, it, okay, there was a, there's been these questions raised about environmental problems, and, and but we, you also have this conservancy. I, I need to hear from your response to the to the fact that some people fear that the Cherokee County might Cherokee Rose might present some environmental problems in the future. None. Okay, thank you. Uh, another person in the public testimony said that the Gator Cup told him that four thousand seven. 470,000 rounds would be fired in the first shots would be fired in the first round of the tournament. Does that sound right? I wish that was the case. Okay. No, sir, sure, that's not right. Okay. And well, they and um, I think it's one of these gentlemen they called and spoke to Craig and Easy 
And, yeah. um, and, he, and he did not give them that information. Okay, but he, would, he would only have told them the truth, and that's not the truth. Okay. And a lot of information is inaccurate. Yeah, what is it? What is it? Uh, hold on. The audience participation part of the program is over. I can ask him. Okay. How many shots? <laughs> <laughs> here's how the event works. It's not going to be 600 people shooting at one time. They'll start shooting on the 15th. It's in rotation. It'll be a 9 o'clock rotation, a 12 o'clock rotation, a 3 o'clock rotation. And that'll go for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, there'll be approximately 600,000 targets thrown during that time. So, well, so the most they can shoot at it is 600,000 times, if not 475,000 in the first event. Um, so, that, you know, but it's... Um, 40,000 shots a day. One, one person one, station. Station. one person. What happens at one station? At one station, they pull a target. At one station, they um, they pull a target and they get um, they get a maximum two shots at it. If they hit it the first time, if they don't shoot it, they reload and they go to pair again. And it's just like it's golf with a shotgun. You have 15 stations. They rotate from station to station. And depending on half of the stations um, they face towards um, Sun City, the other half the other direction. It's the sound goes with the yeah. Where you go. Yeah, they're, they're, they have a brochure of the machine range. Yeah. Uh, finally, finally uh, there was another public question that I promised someone joy I would ask, is, and I wrote down what is the future if you. What, what would be the future of that 25 acres do you think? You never use the other 20? It's it's in the proposal, but I if I did want to do something else with it, I have to come back before y'all and gosh, I hope I don't have to do that. <laughs> yeah, but if we give you AR1, if we give you a PR, yeah. R P P P R P triple R B, that that may not be true. Okay, so in order for me, here's. I mean, if it's a planned development, then that would also always have to come back before the board for approval. Yes, it would be a specific condition that the use is limited oh. to this proposed use okay. unless it came back before the board for amendment. But it can't come back before the board. Beg pardon? But they can come back before the board. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think they would have that right. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not the next, but there's a lawyer here and a staff there. You might. Okay. Uh, who's chairman? That includes Mr. Fox's portion of the question. <laughs> You're welcome. Mr. Harris, if you have any questions. I've got a question. I, I would like to say that uh, I've endured a lot of things worse than uh, alleged uh, improprieties on this board, so I'll give you a pass. Uh, I was plan I was chairman of the planning commission when the Tate Trick Law Day was, was formed. Uh, Jim Owen was uh, a former uh, member of the Board of Regents, was the county attorney. And Jim and uh, I and a couple other people structured this along with Gerald Lawhorn, who formed Cherokee Heroes. And most of you, if you ever bought gas at the petrol station, uh, you bought some of Gerald's gas. Uh, we went through the whole thing of this, and this was set up to be a planned resort and residential, and I keep forgetting what the other R was, development. But Gerald had, uh, he had a restaurant there. Uh, I remember going through the thing where he had a liquor license out there for the restaurant. Uh, if you had houses being built, uh, Gerald became, <coughs> you know, he was the same thing that ALS said. We've lost some really good people there. Uh, and wasn't able to do much more out there than it was sold. But everything is said about the original intention and the way this thing is supposed to work is spot on. I've got copies of the original P Triple R D. You can Google it, it's right on right on here. But it was designed as a uh, sporting event. Uh, I will say that some of the people who sold properties in that area 
were perhaps not as candid as they should have been with their prospects. But Cherokee Rose is like Flat well, International Raceway, it's there. And if you can learn to live with it, I think that's all that we can do at this time. You're not going to shut it down. We're not, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not, and nobody wants. Well, you've got some people that said they love to see it go away, and I know they don't no, mean that quite in that. No, I'm just. I'll give you a chance to do public participation. I'm just telling you some background on that, and you have every right in the world to come in here. This is the way this board is supposed to function. Is that we hear requests, we hear people who have objections, <laughs> and then we make the best possible decision that we can, the facts that we have on hand, and then we make that recommendation to the board of commission. I'll be glad to have any other question if anybody has all your says for me. Yeah, the original, and I read the transcript of the uh, 1989 commission meeting, uh -huh. and the questions that were asked, and the answers that were offered, there was never any mention of a commercial Competition operating rate was the corporate personnel and lives. And by the way, there were not, he also said there was nobody living on property permanently. That's also part of the transcript. But the idea that it turned into a competitive and a national competitive uh, shooting range is absolutely against what was in the original uh, testimony. In, in transcript from 1989. Mm -hmm. Absolutely opposed to any of this. I cannot either agree or disagree with that. I read the transcript. I know what it says. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you. One or two. But really, what, other than, um, I know you can't take care of your immediately. We can't hear you. We can't hear anything. I know you're taking care of your immediate needs and your parking and so forth for your upcoming meeting. Okay. Still 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 Microphone's not on. I can only talk into the mic. Now it's not my job. But anyway, what, what are your real plans here? Do you have any other plans at the moment for the rest of the 25 acres? Yes, sir. Now, how are you? Sir, may I ask a question, sir? No, I thought the gentleman said he'd enter any questions. Yes, he did. We're not supposed to be doing it. We're not okay. supposed to be doing it. That's all I got. He just, he just said he'd entertain a question. I'll answer one question. One question. Uh, yes, ma'am. <clears throat> okay. Have any of you investigated? All right. The idea of any pollution concerning the soil and Troublesome Creek, which runs adjacent to the property on Jordan Hill Road there. The bridge, where the bridge crosses over Troublesome Creek. Has anyone, I don't, I, I'm just asking on the boards, with Cherokee Rose, has anyone looked into the possibility of the lead poisoning? And I am very aware that people will say there is no lead, but there is lead because the Trump administration has negated what the Obama administration. It's out of order. You're up. I'm asking a question. Has anyone? looked into or has the department of environmental protection looked into the 25 35 years of lead that possibly could be in the area of cherokee creek that's my question i can't answer that question because that should probably be addressed either to the spalding county health department or the uh Georgia Environmental Protection Division. It has but to the best of my knowledge, I don't know. It has been addressed. Okay. Just so you know. Thank you.
Okay, uh, in the short term, this purchase of land and wanting to build a parking lot, the sum that I heard was that you're not necessarily wanting to put him out of business. So I would implore you to think about it just from a safety standpoint, about how much safer it will be if the parking is confined to the parking lot, you're not parking down the sides of the road. Mm -hmm. I heard many comments about how safe it was or unsafe it was on that narrow road, and I completely agree with you. Um, but it will only be made worse if they're out there parking on the street. So I, I would implore you to think about that uh, along with the other things that are going on. So, um, with that, I'm going to ask Debbie, do we need to uh, say a motion as far as if we want to roll it into TRRD or do we just need to take an up or down vote? Um, I, th I think I can give you uh, a revised staff recommendation and I'll reread the staff recommended conditions. Okay. So, based on Staff recommendation would be to request a rezoning to PRRRD with the following conditions. And these will be conditions from the original conditions will be from the special exception. But the approval is valid. I'm, I'm sorry. Approval of the Site plan is conditioned upon the approval of the company variance application 21-61B, which was approved on November 23rd, 2021 at the Board of Appeals meeting. The venue is limited to six events during the year with no event to exceed seven days in duration. The owner shall be responsible for additional traffic control during events. Traffic control should give preference to normal vehicular traffic on Baptist Camp and work to minimize disruptions to normal vehicular traffic. Emergency vehicle access routes shall be maintained at all times. Camping is not allowed. If temporary lighting is provided for the events, it shall be cut off or full cut off type lighting, allowing no more than 10% of the light reduced to be reflected above the horizontal plane of the fixture. No parking should be allowed along the right of way of Baptist Camp. The driveway shall remain secure, securely gated, except during scheduled events. <coughs> no event shall violate the litter ordinance. Any future development shall be brought before the board of before the planning commission and the board of commissioners to modification of this rezoning request. There shall be a 50-foot undisturbed buffer along the east and west property lines for the parcel, and a 50-foot undisturbed buffer for many wetlands. And the developer shall obtain a land disturbance permit in accordance with Swabby County requirements prior to any land disturbing activities. So the staff recommends conditional approval with those conditions. Okay, we have those conditions put uh, forward by the planning department. Uh, I'm throwing it open for a planning motion. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, this is not customary for us to ask questions of the staff before voting. Uh, I thought you already asked some of those questions. No? I, no, I'm sorry. I, I know you're tired of me, but I'm, I feel like I'm trying to do my job and I have questions no, from the staff. I really thought you were done. I'm sure they didn't even ask any questions. Yeah. Thank you. Debbie, the, I know that. Bear, bear with me, John. Okay. I noticed that when the notice of the post for its meeting, that posted right across the driveway from the Cherokee Rose. But when I look at the maps, those two parcels don't seem to line up to me. Well, I, I think they, they line up fairly well. That's where you're putting the arrow. That's not part yeah. of Cherokee Rose. That's Part they sold off to some guy, right? No, you that's part you own. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Why, why? Why are the two separate parcels then? Three separate parcels. Okay, you own all three of them. Oh, I didn't know that. 
That's another thing I didn't know. <laughs> my 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 lack of knowledge is astounding, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So 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 you will have a straight cross. You won't have cards on the Baptist camp. It'll be straight across. Yes, it should it should line up. Right. And then the driver will line up and right. go in at sort of an S curve yeah, yeah. so that you won't see straight yeah. into the parking area, but the parking should line up and then there will be traffic control provided for the duration. I, I, got, I got these studies good because I wasn't sure of that. Sorry. Um, so all three parcels are essentially Cherokee Rose, and that wasn't clear either. Um, I okay. believe the parcel division, the parcel lines have something to do with the conservation easement on the this this middle parcel. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't understand it. Um, okay. Um, so there. Did, a, did the Cherokee Rose have a valid business license in each of the last 15 years? Yes. Okay. Um, and has there been major changes to the site plan since its approval that would require? Not that I know of. There, were, there was one. I, I don't have a copy of the original zoning file because in accordance with the Georgia Records Retention Act, we don't retain the paper copies of the file. But they, there was a... a a, re a, a land disturbance permit in about 2006, I believe it was, or 2000, and I'd have to double check the date, but to repair a parking lot and repair a detention pond. Yeah. But that's, that was not an addition. It was, as I, as I read it, a repair. Okay. So the answer is we don't have the original site plan? I do not have a copy of that. So there's no way of knowing that if it's been modified without changes in zoning. I don't. I will have to. Okay, I'm just asking. Um, because, I, you know, I mean, I wouldn't have ever known about it if it hadn't come up in these memos. Um, does the EPO, oh, never mind. This is all rural events stuff. We'll skip that. <laughs> rural events <Yes>, stuff. <laughs> I did that just as a to allow a little bit of flexibility. The board could change that condition. You could change that recommendation. Let's stick with the three that he originally signed up for. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is our time. Uh, okay. So you know, it was two, and then it was three. You know, and I guess what I'm thinking is, given the controversy that this is causing, do you really? I mean, should, should we bump it? Or should we try and try and hold it down until we see what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it could be. It could. That condition would certainly be changed to say just two events or just three events in the course of the year. Okay. Well, but then there was also this business about someone said it may not be true that they have three events scheduled for 2020. The, yeah, they already have three events scheduled for 2020. The owner didn't say that. The, man, the applicant didn't say that. But someone raised that question, so I feel like I have to ask it. Mm -hmm. And the answer is? The answer is we put out our schedule a whole year in advance. Mm -hmm. um, we have, right now, probably Probably 36 of that schedule. That's what we had last year. Well, you know that, but they will park them all on us. Right. Okay, so, so the, mean that the parking, the, the big just tournaments that would require additional parking, and you're going to bring in campers. and Just because we have an event schedule and because we put it in a national publication or they put it in a publication about us. Um, doesn't mean that we're going to need overflow parking. Right. Yeah. That's my whole point is there's 13 events in the country 
that would require the overflow okay. permit. But they're not going to move the Cherokee roads. Okay. We picked up one for Spalding County. And if we're not able to handle this properly, they'll just go to, to Gay, Georgia. You know, they'll go to the, to, um, to the meadow on the north side. But, you know, it's, um, we've got one chance of doing this right, and we're taking the risk to try to do it right. But there's not 10 other events in the country that we could bring in here, unfortunately. Because, um, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, basically, you're saying that you probably only use it two times, two times a year. That's what I hear you saying. Probably, probably. And that you wouldn't mind coming back if you needed to use it a third or fourth time. Now, I, I don't want to do that. You know, I'll go around and listen. We put it at at six. Okay. What did we go to four? I don't know. I'm asking you. Three. Two. We're trying to do something here. This isn't a game or a hidden process. So, yeah. Okay. So, if I was concerned about that, that I should propose a condition. Yes. That, okay. that we would amend that condition to X number of events. Exactly. Yeah, All right, so what are we voting on? Are we going to vote in amendments to three or four? What, what number did you wind up with? I think that would be up to the board to make a decision on whether how many events you would like to recommend that we mr chairman you can entertain a motion and you can obtain your motion in second and then if you want to limit any any condition take care of that in discussion and yeah. then you can have an amended motion I think that's and, and you should do that just amongst yourselves and um not with yeah. comment from the public no, this this is our time. Okay. <laughs> so so there's so Debbie stated something that constitutes a motion, and you're waiting for someone to move. I'm waiting for approval or question, right? Mr. Chairman, what Debbie's what staff stated is not your is not a motion. The motion must come from from one of your. That is one correct, of your and I entertained a motion for someone to make a motion. I can't make it myself. You can. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Robert's Rules of Order would allow me to make that motion. I'll, I'll make a motion to um, move forward with this and all the staff recommendations as stated in the right. I have a motion to move forward with approval. I have a second. I'll second that. And second. Uh, no discussion on it. Well, I, I, would, I, would, I would like to discuss whether we allow two, four, or six events. I think, I think that's a valid consideration. Well, I'll, I'll do that. Okay, so let's discuss that. All right. I thought we were voting on six. I'm, I'm reading. Yeah, yeah, I'm reading. Yeah. I'm waiting here. He's got 13 of that schedule already. And I don't know what a. Does that mean it's right? He wants to use the overflow. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Not right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are you comfortable with four? Overflow? Don't ask him. Don't ask him. Don't ask him. I mean, they're the ones that are going to be affected by it. Yeah, so tell me what the motion is, and I'll tell you whether I support it. 
What was the original application? Three. For three? Three. This was his original request. You need to restore Okay, Commission is focusing on here. So the discussion has been to reduce the number of children. Is that agreeable to all? I can go with that. No, I think given the public controversy, whether you feel it's completely legit or not, over this, I would like to hold the applicant to the original team that being requested. And that with the provision that he can come back if he needs to okay. use the parking lot more than twice a year. So I guess I'm offering a friendly amendment. Or maybe not so friendly amendment. I don't know. Maybe we do agree. Um, let's go to Twice per year. <coughs> this was the intent in the special exception application. And since we're drawing on information from that special exception application, and, and that will go away with the change in the zoning district. So, but this is, it was in the special exception application for twice per year. Okay. Well, that's what we're saying in special exceptions. Um, request. Uh, I'm going to do it to the team. Watch for you. Well, we're not doing it. We're not doing it. No, we're not doing it. Because number of time, number of usage time is what we're debating. But we can place the condition on approval of the parking lot as to how often it can be used. That is within our power. Scope of our authority and our power. But he also has the opportunity to come back. And yeah, I think I think so. I think that's I think that's absolutely natural. I mean, I don't think I don't think there's any question about that. I don't even know if he's if you need to think it needs to be stated, we'll say it. I don't even think it needs to be stated. But but Newton's not here, and I don't know. Any property owner would have that right, Mr. Chairman, but. Um, Given, okay, so given we, the circumstances, it, it is would be fully appropriate to include that language as a condition. Yeah, I think we can always come back and ask additional usage. Yes, sir. So we have a motion after approval the condition specified. And staff recommendations is no need to provide it to twice per year. Yeah, let's go ahead and second. All right. I'll second that. Okay. All right, those in favor signify the right hand. Watch you down. All right. Okay, now we're ready to item two on the agenda. Is that it? Hey, it takes me a few minutes. You lost on that one too, huh? I'm going to do the follow-ups for you. You should have done it. Mr. Chairman, are we in recess? Yes, we're in recess. No, we're just milling around. I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 
Okay, so we're not here at the time. Okay, application number 21 10 Z. Applicant request rezoning the Archfield single family residential to the intent to apply for a special exception to develop a subdivision with less than two acres. I'm not going to read all the, the uh, information there about the size of the property and Mr. part Chairman, of the, I believe you should read all that. Okay. The subject park property is currently a 119.75 acre tract and is on the R1 and R2 with approximately 524 feet of road frontage along Steel Road and approximately 425 feet of road frontage along Vineyard Road. The applicant proposes to subdivide the property in 49 proposed building lots ranging in size from 1 acre to 2.5 acres. In size, the remaining 39.5 acres will be conserved as green space. The lot to be serviced by Spalding County and on site private sector system. Next, to the board. The variance for this proposed subdivision. The variance is to exceed the maximum allowable length of the cul de sac. Whether or not the variance is approved, the subject property will come forward with planning and commission. Commission and Board of Commissioners be a preliminary and final part plant process at a later date. Okay. Do we have an applicant here? Could you come up? And yes. Sir. Search your name and address and uh, fill in the line. Yes, sir. So my name is Richard Perry. I'm with um, Spalding Vineyard 120. We are a subsidiary of Brent Holdings out of Fayetteville. My address is 270 North Jeff Davis Drive in Fayetteville. Mm -hmm. um, we are proposing a, or we are requesting a rezoning from a mixed um, mixed zone piece property. The property is partially zoned R2, partially zoned R1. We're requesting that the entire property be zoned R1 for the purpose of a, um, of a conservation subdivision. We're proposing 40, um, we're proposing 49 lots. The address of the property road um, this property is um, just north of highway 92 in the northwest um, portion of spalding county we're proposing one access point it's roughly 600 linear feet east of steel road we're not proposing any access onto steel road uh, our proposed entrance lines up with westmoreland road our concept shows 49 to show the concept thank you our, our concept shows 49 lots and approximately um, 40 acres of green space. And as the uh, the chairman pointed out, um, that uh, that he pointed out the amount of open space we'd be having 40 is roughly 39 and a half acres, approximately 40 acres. If you look at the um, at the configuration of the open space, it generally surrounds the headwaters of the pond as well as the creeks that come out of the pond. Um, we're proposing to protect that as, as much as we can um, by putting all the open space in that area. Um, the colors that are shown on the, um, on the concept merely uh, align with the type of um, usability of the soils. Also, as the chairman pointed out in his, uh, in his comments, that um, 
that the property would be served by on-site septic. Um, so the areas that are yellow, blue, red, and then the, the orange is, is a wetland um, or floodland configuration. We could not put um, put septic in those areas. The remainder of the property is very um, very usable for septic purposes. Uh, on the tr on the um, on the property, we're also proposing the amenities area. The amenities area will consist of uh, pickleball courts, a playground, and then what we'd like to do in that open space area is, as shown on the on the plan, is to configure uh, walking trails that are improved so that they can uh, so that the residents can have access uh, in and around that pond. Um, in all, the property is 100, roughly 120 acres, and our entire um, density would be uh, 0.4 units per acre. Uh, again, we're requesting um, um, a recommendation of approval for the rezoning to the entire tract uh, being shown as um, R2. Okay, thank you, Mr. Perry. Yes. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Curry? One, I have one question for Mr. Curry. Yes. I, I made a side visit. Um, well, actually, two things occurred to me. One is, you've got a couple other, I saw Vineyard, uh, Spalding Vineyards, a couple places along uh, Vineyard Road. So you've got two other developments already in place. No, this is the only one that's Spalding, one? Spalding Vineyard one time. Okay, but there's a couple of new ones there, and I thought they were called Spalding Vineyard. I must be wrong. It's not my company. Okay. Our company is Spalding Vineyard 120. That's neither here nor there. And, and uh, with, with uh, at, at Ms. Bell's request, we're not going to use the word vineyard in this application in the uh, zone of the. Uh, at the zoning appeal, the, the only concern raised was possible environmental impact. Yes. Um, and it appears to me that you've got things under control. Yes. But I do not know what mitigation through three phase erosion and sedimentation control and ongoing maintenance of stormwater BPMs to weekly MPDS inspection means. Sir, yeah, that, that is that, that is the uh, I guess the legal the, the legal jargon behind how we go about uh, doing three part um, um, okay. de development for erosion and erosion and sedimentation control. Do you mind walking me through that? I I'll do the best I can. Uh, step one would be uh, we, have, we we go through and we uh, do silt, silt fence and okay. we put in our um, our detention ponds. That pre-construction. Step two goes during the construction phase and uh, shows the mitigation means we're going to do, and step three would be following um, construction phase. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Are you willing to uh, maybe set the house size a little larger? I saw that was maybe a, might, might be a possibility. We were proposed. We, we were proposing it at 2,000 um, square feet of heated square of heated um, space. And I talked to our builder group about having the opportunity for to expand it, and they wanted to keep it there because they have a range product to keep it that works at 2,000, and the, the multiple story would would exceed that. When we go to two stories, we get about that. Um, I'm okay with the quiet. Thank you. Uh, yes. Okay, so the request was to rezone from it is a split zoning currently with some of the property at. Trying to get to it, a, a little portion. It's for, I'm sorry. <laughs> a little, a little part of it is R R two, but the rest of it is A R one. So the request is to rezone the entire property to R two to allow for the subdivision development. This did receive a variance from the Board of Appeals to allow for an extended length of the cul-de-sac, which you saw in their plans, and it and it is staff's opinion that. That this is the best configuration for this particular piece of property and, and would have less of an environmental impact than if they tried to tie back in and cross this broad wetland area. So staff supported that variance request and that was approved at the 11-23-21 Board of Appeals meeting. The uh, staff recommendation for this request, staff recommends conditional approval with the following conditions. 
one minimum heated square feet, minimum house size of 2,000 heat square feet. Two, the creation of an HOA is required and the HOA shall maintain all common, all common space. Three, vinyl siding shall be prohibited. Four, brick and masonry facades on all houses with accents of at least 25% on three sides of the house. That's masonry accent. Um, five, they're not doing a conservation subdivision, so five is not applicable. Six, amenities shall include pickleball court, playground, and nature trail as shown in the concept plan. And seven, if the rezoning application is approved, preliminary and final plat shall be presented to planning commission and board commissioners per the guidelines of the subdivision ordinance before building permits can be applied for. Okay, thank you. We have three people that have signed up to speak uh, that are against the proposed rezoning. Uh, first person is Troy Pullon. Hello, good evening. My name is Troy Hewlin. Uh, in 70, 1978, we moved, which is right down the road there. It's dirt road, wooden bridge. We gave two acres of land to pay that place. Uh, it was wetland. I built across this creek from where we originally lived at, uh, up on the hill. It never really flooded. In the last five years, my barn from the water, uh, they anything from the skating ring of 1941 to Sunnyside comes down through the creeks. So um, when we gave the property and stuff, they was everything was going to be okay. Well, they put the bridge in wrong. It's cut across my property now, and it's eating my property away. I have eight acres of land. Sometimes I go to bed, and it's I got to tell everybody I got eight acres of land. But I wake up one acre of land and seven acre of lake. Two years ago, I was four foot under water. My barn was under it. The Buddhist temple across the street, which I came to y'all before and said, hey, that's not going to work because it's going to be underwater. Sure enough, all the air conditioning units, the whole first floor are underwater. So with this coming in, it's a runoff. I'm concerned about it. As long as we can control the runoff. And so down into that, my, and my donkeys and horses drink from it. So we really, really control that runoff because now we've got new roofs, new sidewalks, you know, new roads. And so I'm not, I'm on my housing council. I'm with the housing authority. I know we're short on housing. So I'm not fighting the subdivision itself. Now, the Homeowners Association, I really push for you. Because right up the road, they put a walking trail around the creek, I mean, a, a pond. The land bank owns it now. So, uh, while the land bank got the walking trail, around a, a lake, that's beyond me, but um, I just, let's say, monitor this water buffer zone for my neighbors and stuff, because y'all did with the boots, make sure that they had the buffer zones in place and stuff, you know, and just hopefully that it doesn't turn around like the vineyard places down the road there, where our deputy here in fact probably have to visit all the time. Thank you. Next, we have uh, is it Eddie Smith. Yeah, um, yeah I believe. Okay. And, uh, Scott Cumberland. <clears throat> Thank you. Scott Conway, lived at 178 Still Road, Griffin Village. Uh, me and my wife moved there in the early 90s. Uh, we fall six acres of land because we want to live rural. I'm not against the subdivision. I'm not for the subdivision. I just want to make a statement. Uh, when we bought our land, we uh, to purchase land, we had to have 250 foot of growth on still live on Steel Road. That was the standard. Uh, we wanted to build a new house, and to build that house, we had to buy additional land, another 250 foot growth on it. In my misunderstanding, I built a house behind the house. 
the original house was a handy house that was there from the 1800s and we were made to tear that house down within 30 days of completing our new house my question is the standards for is that 20 and 21 I, is that still road that is going right there for a lot 20 and 21 yeah, it's down below yeah, this is still road at the edge. Um, oops. Right. That's seven, still road. Yeah, seven and eight. Well, it's seven and eight. Right. They will have a no access easement along Steel Road. Yes, ma'am. The, the ones, is that the only two that will be on Steel Road? Because I know the power plant is right past that. Uh, yeah, that, right past that. Those are the only ones with. with in front of what would that real be? Well, Ray, can I explain this now? Um, yes, yes Andrew. Okay. Looks like new roads within this. Well, yeah, then their, their road frontage will be based on the new roads within their subdivision. Their their frontage on Steel Road, they'll be their double frontage lots. But what we do with the subdivision that's developed like this is we would put a no access easement along steel road they would be prohibited from putting a driveway on steel road their driveway would come internally into their subdivision and my other question was would that be the two acre track lots those two are no they, this will come back the intent is for this to be a special exception subdivision so it would come back before the before the Board of Appeals and the Board of Commissioners with a refined site plan for a special exception request for that lot size. Okay. And the only other statement I wanted to make was that I do appreciate the efforts in the style of homes. Vineyard has just been took over by a little bit of the lower income. And the house that I have is a 3,000 something square foot house on 15 acres. I don't want my property value to just you know, come down even though things are selling great right now, I understand, but we have a low of only seven five. It will go back down for everybody. I just don't want my center to go too low, and I don't want to oppose restrictions on someone who is purchased land and can do it as they wish. I just would just ask for us to keep in mind to keep the community of that area like it is, uh, not necessarily the way it is down the road now. With the subdivision that is currently being built and has already shut back down for the third time. And has not gotten accomplished and, uh, and that's just not good for the community because i did drive there just four days ago before the chain, the chain up was washing chain there's a dryer it was about 80 tires or something there on a brand new road mm -hmm. and they had been working out there and really took care of that place but nobody has overseen it and i, and I understand that they're going to come to build the homes and i appreciate that they're going to individually sell the lots how what's the chances of it being a dump what's the chances of how long is that going to take? See, if it was a track builder, someone coming and building in their home, track homes, they would be sold pretty quickly. But if we're going to wait to sell, it's just an opportunity for a lot of problems with, I'm telling you, we've got horrible dumping, especially down um, right on our, what's the one right there? Very bad couches. And all, every, I mean, it's every week that the TVs are going off there. And, it's a nice community. I'd like to, and I, I don't believe they're doing a good job, but they're going to do a good job. My thing is just to ask you guys to be mindful about what could come in the time that we're waiting for these homes to be sold, each, each part of our land. I don't know how we can address that, how we can go about that. This is something I just want to bring to Okay? That's all I have. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? I'm not going to go back to the gentleman who's got that water problem and what are we going to do about that? Is anybody going to do anything about that? Because whatever we're addressing right here is that it, 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 any possibility of making his situation worse. I would think if the subdivision is constructed properly, it will have the retention plan okay. to accommodate that. Okay. I, I think what we're dealing with is one of the things in situations where it's that it wasn't a chance. I our engineer for the I agree with that. So I mean, as they go into the design of this, they should uh, be you know, sticking with the guidelines and doing what they need to do for the years. 
Yes, sir. What's the what's the issue? Did you sign up? I did not, sir. Okay. Not this week. I did last. If I may, I on this site plan. Come on up here and say your name and get up to the right. Thank you for the opportunity. My name is Jeff Wilson, eleven ninety three Vineyard Road, and this site plan, this proposed plan, uh, could somebody maybe point out where our retention pond area is. I see you know, the natural pond and I'm in that square where your cursor is at right there. Uh, I sure don't want to see uh, drainage come down the hill onto my 12 acres and my pasture and my garden, but it, is there a retention pond that is laid out in this site plan? They don't. They don't show anything in this con at this level. Okay. That is a requirement for the subdivision. And the it's subdivision is required to deal with the stormwater. That's up to the engineer. Sometimes when a development is close to a floodplain, the the better engineering option is to allow stormwater to go in rather than having it come into the floodplain coming from further up in the in the watershed in that Mike basin. So I don't know what their plan is here to deal with the stormwater. But there there are engineering requirements that the engineers have to calculate and determine how they're going to address the stormwater on every site. This this uh, map, the cul-de-sac that you see at the top up there yeah. on the north side of that property, that's, that's not a topographical, but that's pretty close to the top of that hill. So from there, the water is shedding in every direction toward myself, toward the bar's property that is on the other side of that hill, and the low limb of the, the wetlands down below that will impact this gentleman over here. We don't know, we're all just curious as to if we control this runoff, do our due diligence to protect existing homeowners. Uh, everybody's got their, I was here, well, I bought in 1980. 41 years, going on 42 years ago, I bought a piece of land over here. And uh, we love it. I, yeah, I can hear, I can hear the Cherokee rose from my place real good. I, I can't hear my vacuum cleaner once I get out the door, but I can sure hear the Cherokee rose. But uh, that was just, uh, I, I didn't see it on the plat, and I was curious, and you're, what you're saying is as all this begins to finalize, we determine we can put in a retention bond and it won't go in the is it allowed to go in the areas that are set aside as con conservation? Is that considered? Yeah, a percent usually a percentage of the stormwater retention is allowed in the main space. There, there are different configurations to the subdivision, so it depends on what option they choose, how what the percentages would be. Well, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Okay. I think uh, well, I'm still on the stormwater plan. I personally would not want to go forward with this without some uh, explanation, some idea of where the stormwater is going. So, I just want to pull people. Well, I, I will. Oh, excuse me. Let's see. I will almost second that because when I did my site visit, I was concerned about topography, but the site isn't accessible. Maps, you got access to that, so 
even, I mean, even the engineers can tell more than I could probably tell by walking it. Well, overall, he, he's correct, Mr. Wilson's correct. This cul-de-sac is more or less a high point. Everything is going to drain toward this pink, orange, yeah. blue area. Um, so there is a little bit of no. <laughs> Well, actually, yes, uh, someone said that it drains in all directions from that high point. Well, but from the road, from the road, the road will collect the stormwater, and that stormwater discharge will all go toward that center part. Yes, there's water's going to flow downhill. So, yes, if anything, like lots 29, 30, 31, it's still going to flow downhill. But from a stormwater perspective, from the roads, the stormwater that's collected there, from those impervious surfaces will go into a storm constructed stormwater system. Whether or not they ch the engineer chooses to put in stormwater ponds, I don't know. Again, because there's floodplain close by, and I believe a little bit of the floodplain comes up into the property right here. So they may there may be an engineering calculation that would be done to discharge water to that sooner rather than later. If the stormwater detention ponds don't retain it. They only retain the water temporarily and time the release. the locations, proposed locations for stormwater pond, and then at the construction phase, they do the balance of the engineering calculations and build it and final plat. So it's constructed before it receives its final plat, and then the final plat has to be recorded before anybody could even obtain a building permit. I'm just putting out the possible options as I know them from an engineering standpoint of, of what might happen with the stormwater on this site. I don't know what the engineer has planned. So, Mr. Harris, your recommendation would be for the change in zoning. And that, that's all. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. I make a motion to approve case 21 10 Z in accordance with staff recommendations. I have a motion to approve and have a second. I'll second it. Second by Mr. Conahan. <clears throat> Those in favor. Second. But I have a question. This, when we went over the condition, I think I'm fading now. When we went over the condition, did you did you want to include all seven of them or did, did one of them drop out? One of them dropped out because it's not a concept. I, I dropped out number five. Okay, then I would like to amend versus movement or motion to drop out number five so we have conditional approval with staff points one, two, three, four, six, and seven. Okay. 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 Move to second. All right. Those in favor signify the raise of right hand. Okay, that was item two. Yeah. <laughs> um, with respect to the text amendments, yeah. the NEID is on. I received that from Newton late last night, so I know nobody has had an opportunity to look at that. But I did talk to him about that today. Um, we will not. Our, our moratorium on the North Expressway expires January 28th. 
So we've got, well, we don't have our scheduled planning commission meeting for December because it would fall right in between Christmas and New Year's. What Newton suggested was we could plan a called meeting of the planning commission in early January if you wanted to do that and just look at the text amendments then or just look at any ID then if you want to look at the other text amendments tonight. I, I would much agree with that, although I do think we can put through the other two pretty quickly. I, I think I think so. If but you want to. I mean, we can delay, delay all three or at least delay Ned. Mm -hmm. And that's the way I know. I would like to delay Ned because I want to get caught. I think everybody would like to read through it. Um, so, do you want to let's look at uh, uh, 2107 and 2106, and then I'll give you just a quick that in your mind when you look at it later. That is fine by me. Right, let's go ahead and read the 2107, the accessory structure, structures, first reading of the proposed accessory structure order. So, how many buildings can you have? Four, six, eight, <laughs> four, two. two. <laughs> And in each category, the number is two. So this this is a recommendation from staff based on situations where we have seen properties, smaller properties. There, there's no currently no limit on the number of accessory structures and buildings that you can have. So we see properties with and five accessory buildings, outbuildings, garden. So this was how Newton recommended it, was that the number of accessory buildings and structures on a track of less than three acres shall be limited. Um, that's for a R1. Excuse me. And then in R1, I think it, I think it left out the three acres in R1. But uh, but on all of the tracks, it limits them to two. So any others? It's it's the two shed ordinance. Yes. The, there is a Monty Python comedy sketch from the sixties called Arthur T. And Debbie will henceforth be known as Debbie. So you can have a he shed and a she shed. Yeah. Right. Right. Good with that. Uh, you know, again, this was not intended to, to not allow people to have a garden shed or something like that, but just to on smaller properties having three outbuildings on the property. We, we've talked about this before, so I think people know what's what's going on and where you're coming from. So I might move approval. I have a second. I'll have a second. Did you have a comment? I think it was probably. Oh, that's right. No, you did have a comment earlier. Really. Yeah. <laughs> oh, comments. <laughs> Those in favor of signify by raise your right hand. Okay. 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 Very well. Sorry. Okay, so we're we'll writing this on the solar ordinance. So um, several months ago, at, because we had gotten a lot of requests for solar farms, commission and Newton wrote a solar energy ordinance finds the different types of solar installations, such as large large solar installation, ground mounted, and small solar installation. Does is provides for where. It and in the zoning districts, what's allowed in AR1, what's allowed in AR2, R1, and so forth. So it just limits and defines, require these to all come for special exception. 
um, for ground mounted units and integrated, I'm sorry, in the integrated solar energy roof mounted units. Debbie, could you clarify for me, are we, but on the accessory structures and on solar ordinance, this is first reading, is that? Yes. Okay. And the accessory structure motion, um, Mr. Cox was on first reading to um, approve the proposed accessory structure ordinance limiting Yes, you okay. were much more articulate and okay. knowledgeable. Thank I appreciate, you. I appreciate your okay. counsel. Thank you. But yeah. So when we created the new definitions and the category for solar energy as a as a use or as types of use, then then we have to define how that gets applied in each zoning district. So that's the purpose of this amendment tonight. Mr. Chairman, yes. Sir. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. I've changed my mind. I, I would like to have you here for this. So, at this point, so I'm going to suggest maybe we table the extra January meeting because I really would like to be here. Um, you were the one that said we could bring it up. You were, and I'm man enough to admit. I'm good with that. How about you guys? Yeah. yeah. I'm good. Can I just ask one clarifying question? So, really, only in AR1, you have the, the full scale, scale like this Correct. Customer, kind of for special uses on the site. Right. That would be more applicable to individual solar panels. Do you make a motion to take it? I need a second. Okay, I'll second that. Okay, right in favor. Okay. You need to vote on the minute track. Okay. 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 Okay.
Well, that was a downer. Yeah. Can you look at this? <laughs> It's time to adjourn the motion to adjourn. Yes, yes, yes. All right, we're adjourned. It's a second. We can we have to finish our paperwork. Are you going home? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Let's see. That one the end is yeah, and again. Thank you.